Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Horror House. Yes, that is right. It is October the 1st and Horror House has finally returned. And what a better time to do it than for Halloween month. I am Morgan, your host, as always. And to kick the return off, today, uh, if you have seen on Twitter over the past week or a couple of weeks or so, I have been uh, putting polls out for individual films that you want me to talk about uh, for the return of the show. Uh, of course, that is at the Purple Don on Twitter or the podcast at Horror House Pod, just to get those out of the way quickly. Um, but yes, what we're going to be doing uh, for October, at least, is uh, two Horror House episodes a week, uh, most of which will be uh, episodes like this, which are going to be talking about one uh, chosen by, you know, the peop chosen by the people of Twitter. Uh, one film that uh, that they want me to talk about. One film that I uh, put on these polls and said, vote for whichever one of these you want. Uh, all those were cast, and uh, it resulted in the selection of films you are going to be seeing. And the first one was the ever wonderful, and uh, I'm so glad we're kicking the return off with this one to be honest because it's such a light hearted silly thing to kick uh, off the return with um, yeah what we do in the shadows let's do it it's 2014 so it's three years old now um, well technically it's a lot older than that because it was based on a 2005 original short film that the same people made. Uh, and that was about, I think it's about half an hour long. Um, and to use its full name, it was called What We Do in the Shadows Interviews with Some Vampires, which is uh, just a wonderful name. I kind of wish uh, the full feature version would have been called that. But uh, of course, that doesn't matter at all. Um, you know, brought brought to uh, brought to us by some of the same guys that did Flight of the Concords, uh, which has a huge cult following, uh, and is a fantastic and hilarious television show. Uh, that thanks to Kimber of Odd Shaped Channel uh, for actually forcing me to watch that because I love it now. It's wonderful. You know, like I was not going to love it already, you know, uh, being a big fan of this sort of sense of humour. Uh, it is perfect for me. And, of course, what we do in the shadows is filled with that very, very dry humour <laughs> that I just... It kills me every single time. And some... I mean, some of uh, some of the lines in in what we do in the shadows are just it. It requires me to pause the film so I can laugh properly, and I don't do that a lot. There's only really um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia that I do that to. Uh, apart from you know stuff by this same group of New Zealanders. Um, obviously that's Taika Waititi that is Jermaine Clement um, yeah I mean I don't know <laughs> I've never quite understood what makes uh, this humour so funny to me because I think it's more to do with the delivery of the lines than the actual lines themselves um, you know it's these sort of really nonsense insane bizarre conversations and scenarios 
that are just played so seriously that for some reason I just find so funny like it's not funny to explain why it's funny but you know it's he's very it's very difficult to convince um not necessarily to convince but to explain why something is funny to someone like you just have to watch these things I think and if you get it you get it if you don't you don't and because comedy is arguably the most subjective thing on the planet um but yeah I mean I really I really do love this sort of sense of humour and it does it does kill me I mean what we do in the shadows opening scene is uh, you know it's so highly regarded you know I feel like I feel like everyone who knows horror knows what we do in the shadows opening scene because it's one of the more memorable of any sort of horror film and yes this is a comedy horror film but uh, I, I really do feel like its opening scene is one of the most memorable of maybe the you know the probably the twenty first century. I think, um, and this opening scene is of course uh, Taika Waititi who plays Viago, uh, Jermaine Clement who plays Vladislav, and Johnny Brew 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 spelled B R U. G H, uh, not quite sure how you pronounce that to be honest, but he plays Deacon, uh, who are three vampires. There's a fourth vampire called Peter, who's eight thousand years old and looks like Nosferatu, uh, but he lives in the basement in a stone coffin and he's quite terrifying, <laughs> and we don't go to him a lot, but um, yeah, it's those three, and they all live together in an apartment or in a house in. New Zealand, in Wellington, New Zealand, and um, it is just so sort of, it's so real life, you know, and that's that's what makes this sort of thing funny, because it's vampires having a flat meeting, you know, having a house meeting, uh, complaining that Deacon has not done the dishes in five years, and um, you know, he's not pulling his weight around the flat. You know, he's a cool guy, like they say, he's a cool guy. But I don't feel like you're pulling your weight. And really, I think, especially in this opening scene, it's it's Taika Waititi who steals it for me uh, as Viago. Because he's so sort of mellow. He's like the least vampiric vi vampire you've ever seen. Um... I think Vlad Jermaine Clement is the most uh, what you'd think of a vampire as. Um, of course, another wonderful thing is that Vlad um, likens, well, doesn't liken himself. Um, he calls himself Vlad Vladislav the Poker. Obviously, a play on Vlad the Impaler, who. Count Dracula was based off of in the real world um, but that, I mean that's just funny again it's sort of these deliver uh, these line deliveries because obviously there's talking heads in this because it is a mockumentary and um, so when he's you know when Jermaine Clement is talking to the camera as Vlad obviously uh, and he just said, yes, I was known as Vladislav the Poker. And then he just gives like a slight wry smile to the NEC. It is unexplainable hilariousness. And I don't think hilariousness is a word. But uh, that is exactly what it is. I mean, speaking of, uh, you know, the whole mockumentary aspect of it, people might look at you know mockumentaries even even you know three years ago in 2014 when this originally came out on sort of wider release you know they may look at it as sort of a bit of an old thing being that 
you know, it's often said that the mockumentary sort of peaked in the mid to late 2000s with uh, things like the US office, obviously, the UK office did it, did all that first, but not on the scale of the US office. And with um, things like uh, Parks and Rec as well, and these are, you know, strict comedy shows, comedy TV shows. Um, and you know, all there's been a lot of films that have have taken the mockumentary format on as well. But I I really don't feel like there has been any that has done it quite on the level of what we do in the shadows. At least from a horror perspective, um, and you know, as a big horror fan, maybe this one just sort of sticks with me more than others because I'm so. Um, you know, I know, I know about the history of vampires and stuff. I know about the history of vampires in pop culture, and you know, to see them twisted this way is so clever. You know, not that I need to say, not that I feel like I need to say this to anyone listening. I'm sure everyone listening is fully aware of how wonderful what we do in the shadows is. You know, even if you ne- if even if you don't necessarily maybe love it as much as I do, but you know, compl- you know, you might completely understand what it's going for. You might get it, but it just might not be for you because of the humour. Um, you know, I'm sure you can, you know, identify there. I've got a really weird bit of trivia written down here. Which is that Taika Waititi um, based his performance as Viago in this off his own mother, which is hilarious to me, because I believe his mother is of uh, is of Jewish descent, um, and his father is you know native New Zealand, but um, Maori I think. But that is, I mean, n- knowing that now, I, I only, uh, I only found this out like yesterday when I was looking at what we do in the shadows trivia. Um, that just makes it sort of more funny because he is a very, he's very much the mother of the f- of the uh, of the house of the flat that they all live in. He's the one who wakes them all up at six p.m. And uh, obviously, with with the camera, with the documentary crew following him round, um, oh, you know, opening the curtains at night, being fearful that it's going to be still day, and then he has to celebrate when it's not day. You know, he goes and wakes everyone up, and they all. It's clear that they all kind of don't like to be woken up by him but he it's clear that he does this every single day just because he feels like he has to and this is explained by the others because all the vampires in the flat are from different sort of eras like I mentioned Peter before who looks like Nosferatu who lives in the basement he's 8,000 years old and doesn't say you know words just sort of squeals and screams uh, he's by far the most terrifying and when Viago goes and wakes him up in the morning uh, <laughs> he's very hesitant to but you know as he would do being a nice vampire he brings him a chicken in a sack for breakfast a live chicken so uh, that and just puts that in the tomb with him uh, but yeah you get um, so you get Peter who's 8,000 years old you get Viago is about 350 years old I think and he's sort of described as a 17th century or an 18th century dandy by uh, Jermaine Clement's character Vlad and you know that is so clear he's so sort of fussy 
and really weirdly for a vampire really likes you know to look nice he's very hygienic he doesn't like to be um he's the tip you know he's the typical 18th century he's what you think of an 18th century high class aristocrat basically and um obviously vladislav vlad the poker is a ruthless middle ages warmonger and described as a bit of a pervert by Viago, <laughs> who, um, yeah, very much likes to, uh, pretty, pretty, got some violent tendencies there. But, uh, once we get into the actual plot of, uh, the film, Vlad becomes quite a sort of soft sort of character. And no, the plot's not necessarily the main focus of what we're doing in the shadows at all. It is very much more just about um, the scenario itself rather than what they're doing. It's about the fact that they are doing this. Um, Deacon, like I said, Johnny Brewer, who I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Uh, Deacon is, I think, about 170 years old or 180 years old and is regarded as the rebellious teenager of the of the entire group who does crazy things when they go on nights out in Wellington where they try and find victims yes but once we get it once we do get into the plot and this sort of um, well the plot is basically deacon has this familiar or servant called Jackie who, he, who this who he's hypnotized and this poor woman has to do everything for him not that she wants to but she's but she has to because she's hypnotized by a vampire and she brings uh, she brings Nick to their house for a quote unquote dinner party and obviously this is so they can uh, feed on Nick because vampires need food and they can't eat normal food um, and this this entire scene is like it's it's arguably sort of the best horror in the entire film but it is so funny because you know the the dinner party as it were plays out and then Nick tries to leave because they keep sort of doing strange things to him and he can't leave basically all the doors are locked everybody goes and then the three the three main vampires start flying around and all ch trying to chase him down in the, in in their own house um and it this is now this is one of the funniest parts to me because it's previously explained that Vlad Jermaine Clement's character used to be very 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 powerful up until his fight with uh, the beast as they refer to it as uh, which, for some reason, even that makes me laugh. Even the fact that, even the name The Beast makes me laugh. But, um, basically, after this one particular fight, he lost a lot of his, his, his former power. And now when he tries to transform into animals, he never gets the faces right. So, move forward to this scene again with Nick trying to escape the house and they're all chasing after him there's just this one quick little shot of Jermaine Clement's face on a cat like it's just a cat with Jermaine Clement's face just hissing and it makes it is the funniest possible thing it's like again I'll say it's not funny to explain why this is funny but every time, because it's it's just a really quick sort of passing shot, but it's 
it's really really funny to me so you know all this ends with uh, Nick himself becoming a vampire and he is actually finally caught by Peter so not one of the main three but Peter's lurking out somewhere and he's the one who actually turns him into a vampire and uh, I'm not going to talk about the plot too much but basically Nick goes through his transformation that's sort of played for sort of dramatic laughs because it's like oh it's been really hard you know it's been really hard transforming uh, in the first sort of few days I was feeling really ill and all that sort of stuff and it is uh, it's very very clever it's a very very clever film um, it plays on so many so many vampire tropes um, that obviously as horror fans we're all familiar with and that is where that is where the true sort of beauty of this film is yes it is pretty much an out and out comedy uh, but with all these horror elements in that aren't necessarily scary at all but it is very very much a you know set up to look like at least a horror film even though it's a mockumentary like I said I'm not necessarily going to talk about the plot a bit uh, the plot a lot because well I, I don't necessarily want to give it all away for those who may not have seen it uh, I just kind of want to show my love for it uh, in this <laughs> that's yeah that's pretty much all I'm going to do um, I do want to talk about Nick's best friend called Stu who um, comes into the comes into the film as sort of this character who now that Nick's a vampire like he's struggling with telling his best friend Stu that he's a vampire but when he eventually does uh, the sort of the whole group of them they seem to they seem to like Stu more than they like Nick because Nick's very uh, I don't know loud uh, about his uh, well let's just say he doesn't refrain from telling people he's a vampire and this causes some sort of problems because that's very much frowned upon and we see why it's we see the consequences of him doing this and we see why it's very much frowned upon for vampires to tell everyone that they're a vampire but like Stu's just this normal average quite a boring dull guy but they all seem to love him more than they love Nick for some reason and that's he's just an any he, you know he's he's just a human being um <laughs> you know he turns up at every he even turns up at the final uh unholy masquerade ball which is the yearly uh, meet up of all the undead characters in the greater Wellington New Zealand area that they all get invited to and Stu's there as well the the one human who's there and that causes a bit of a a bit of an issue uh again i i do really want to mention now you're probably surprised that after nearly 25 minutes of me rambling inanely about what we do in the shadows that i haven't brought these guys up yet uh, I will tell you exactly what I've written down in these notes here because I feel like this is uh, the just the perfect name for a band. I've wrote Reese Darby and the Swear Wolves. Um, I don't know. The the werewolves are such wonderful minor characters. Especially Reese Darby. Uh, I think his name's Anton in it. Um, obviously, I think most people are aware of, you know, we're werewolves, not swearwolves. Uh, that's arguably that's the 
famous line from what we do in the shadows that's the most quotable or quoted line from what we do in the shadows and it's not even about vampires um but yeah reese darby is a very very funny man and again i'm not even going to attempt to explain why i find him so funny but i just really do and he see you know he sees himself very much as the alpha male of this werewolf pack and it's almost like it's almost racism that vampires and werewolves have against each other um they you know they really sort of don't like each other and so on this particular night when the vampires have been into wellington trying to find victims or whatever uh they're, they're, they're sort of walking home and the pack of werewolves comes and it all kicks off basically and but in just it's weird because it it does like I said, it, it kicks off, but in the, in the most funny way possible. And again, this is going back to line delivery being funny to me. Because when when uh, when Reese Darby says, "What? I heard that. I have sensitive hearing." Like for some reason, that is so funny, and I've got a big stupid grin on my face right now. But like, I don't know, I can't explain why. I cannot explain why. But yes, like I said, he sees himself very much as the alpha male of the werewolf pack. When he's really more of the sort of fussy mother. Very similar to how uh, Viago, Taika Waititi, is with the vampires. And um, this is shown in no better light than in a later scene with the werewolves when it is in fact a full moon and they are getting ready for the transformation <laughs> and Reese Darby is very stressed out because everyone's just very inept and they, they don't seem to all the other werewolves don't seem to know what they're doing and he's trying to get them all to chain themselves to trees uh, you know for, for, for everyone else's safety when they turn into a werewolf and uh, I think again I do think one of the most funny sort of lines in the entire film and th you know this is a film that is filled with so many funny funny lines and I know I'm I know this show is called Horror House and we're, we're a horror show but, and I know I'm talking a lot about comedy, but, you know, this is a, it's a comedy film with horror in it. And I think anybody, anybody listening to this doesn't mind me talking on about this. At least I don't think. Please let me know if you do. Um, but this one line when he's he's telling this other werewolf that the tree he's chained himself to is too thin and for some reason I don't know if it's the way Reese Darby says the line, I don't know if it's even the accent I don't know if it's even the New Zealand accent that makes it so much funnier than it has any right being but it's when he says and I'm not going to I'm not going to do Reese Darby, an impression of Reese Darby right now, but the line basically is, he, he shouts over to this uh, one werewolf called Declan, and he says that tree's too thin. Look at it; it's like a branch. He's like, how big do you, tr how big do you get when you transform? That's not the tree for you. And for some reason. Like I said, I don't know if it's the accent, I don't know if it's the delivery, I don't know. But that is one where I just have to pause. Pause the film in order to laugh properly. Um, and he's getting very, very stressed out. He's, he, and he ends, up, he ends up swearing himself. 
Reese Darby, the uh, or Anton, I should say, Anton the werewolf, the um, forefather of we're werewolves, not swearwolves, ends up swearing himself. And his justification for doing this when it is brought up by another werewolf saying, stop swearing. His justification with this, it's a full moon, I'm very stressed out. And, I mean, the, even after this, the werewolves come back into it. The werewolves have a surprisingly sort of uh, large role in the plot for such sort of minor characters. Because, now this is a... I mean, if you consider spoilers for films like this, spoilers, I mean, um, you know, it's not really a twist, twist and turn dramatic oh my god type spoiler but uh stew the boring dull average best mate of nick the vampire nick at this point in the film has been cast out of the vampire group because they don't like him <laughs> or, or he's done something wrong i'll say um but stew is in this scene that I'm talking about with them chaining themselves to trees, um, I think it's Deacon who annoys them again, or it might be it might be Vlad actually, Jermaine Clement, because he's I think he's wearing a fur coat, and and Reece Darby finds that very offensive, and um, stews with them. I think this is after the unholy masquerade ball, actually. Um, yeah, so Stu's with them. Stu gets turned into a werewolf, basically. And um, this results in <laughs> the final scene of the entire film is the werewolves and the vampires actually coming together as friends. Uh, all because of Stu the most, like I keep saying, the most boring man on the face of the earth and uh, all, all uh, the, the very minor race war between the vampires and the, uh, and the werewolves, any, any bigotry against either species is put aside because they now have the common connection of stew and uh and that that you know that's where that's where the film ends i know there has been many 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 rumors about a uh a spin-off film uh, about the werewolves uh and whatever whether this is called you know swear wolves or we are wolves or whatever title you've seen in these rumors because uh, I've seen I've seen multiple I am a big fan of that happening one day I'm a, I really really would love 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 to see that uh, that happen hopefully Taika Waititi after well now that he is uh, done creating uh, the third Thor film maybe he can start working on that because I'd love that um, but yeah, I mean, like I've said, plot is not the main focus of what we do in The Shadows. It is very much this comedy film. Um, but I really do feel like uh, the stuff with the Beast and uh, and Vlad is qu honestly quite sort of yes, it's funny, but it's arguably sort of a very no I don't know almost a very sort of identifiable plot within this entire film because uh, at this unholy masquerade ball that they all get invited to and is a big yearly thing the guest of honour this year was supposed to be Vlad but it turns out that he, that uh, the guest of honor this year is in fact the beast and Vlad's not happy about this and Vlad lets himself go he doesn't eat and he becomes this horribly grey wrinkled 
yes, he is dead, he's a vampire, but now he actually looks like he's dead. Um, but the Beast turns out to just be an ex-girlfriend. Like, and the Beast is built up as this horrendous, big, demonic character with, you know, seven legs and four tails and five heads and fire breath and whatever else nonsense um, is seen on these sort of drawings that come up on screen. These, you know, medieval drawings of just the most gruesome looking creations. Um, <laughs> but whenever the beast is mentioned, these drawings just come up on screen. So you've got this um you've got this image in your head of the beast and then when they get their invitation and Taika Waititi is there is reading it out and he says and the you know the guest of honor this year is oh and Vlad's like what 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 is it he's just like you just just look and it's a, he's just he's just found out that the guest of honor is the beast and, it, and the beast is just an ex-girlfriend of Vlad who to be fair they don't have the best sort of relationship as we see five minutes later at the at the unholy masquerade ball um, but I, lo I just love the fact that it is built up as this massive thing that just turns out to be an ex-girlfriend that the just ended on horrible terms M made even funnier by the fact that Vlad is presented as this formerly very powerful, very ruthless warmonger of a vampire obviously again played off of Vlad the Impaler who as we know was a horrendously evil man <laughs> um, one of the most evil men in human history uh, I think it's fair to say. Um, I don't think I'll say much more about the film, really. I just, you know, wanted to gush about it, wanted to bring Horror House back with a very light-hearted, very, very, very casual showing of love for what we do in the shadows. Thank you to everyone that voted for what we do in the shadows on that poll. I hope you've enjoyed me gushing about it for 40 minutes. And, uh, yeah, uh, look out for the next one of these, which will be more horror-focused, I promise, because uh, the next one of these will be out on Wednesday and is on Train to Busan. Uh, and thank you to everyone that voted on the poll for Train to Busan as well. Um... And I, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Train to Busan. And you will see that as well. Maybe I'll just gush about Train to Busan. Um, I think in uh, in Wednesday's episode. Um, but yeah, hopefully. And, th you know, that will be more. Uh, absolutely, that will be more horror focused. This was a very, very, uh, you know, comedic. Th it's a comedy film, so it's going to be sort of a. I'm going to focus on the comedy aspects uh, in in an episode where I talk about what we do in the shadows, um, some you know a film that plays so wonderfully on the whole mythology of vampires, and uh, I hope you've all enjoyed this return episode to Horror House. Uh, the regular style episodes that you used to aren't going anywhere uh, but I just wanted to fill October fill Halloween month with uh, this these type of uh, things just to get you in the horror mood uh, ready for Halloween so guys that is going to do it for this episode of Horror House I do hope you've enjoyed it please if you have Give it a share around and leave a like. Leave a comment. What do you think about what we do in the shadows? If you are on uh, iTunes or Apple Podcasts, I should say, or any, uh, or CastBox or any of the uh, other um, 
audio podcast places uh, please leave a rate and review of the show in its uh, in its entirety I'd, I'd I'd love you for doing that I really really would um, what else can you do you can follow the podcast on Twitter like I mentioned right at the start at horror house pod you can hashtag horror house pod if you want to tell me all about your thoughts on what we do in the shadows on um, on Twitter and please do that or you can follow me personally on Twitter at the purple dawn yeah that's about it guys be sure to check out the latest episode of the enlightenment hour as well that if you are on YouTube you will be able to find on this channel uh, it'll be one of the most recent videos um, on because I've started watching Star Trek and you can check out my thoughts on that that's Star Trek the original series um, and of course if you're on iTunes just type in or Apple Podcasts I've got to get used to saying that uh, type in uh, Purple Dawn on the podcast search there and you'll find the Enlightenment Hour straight away uh, yes I think that is about it guys so once again I will say thank you very much for watching and until next time goodbye